Awesome. So with that, let's jump to the next question. Our next question of the day, which is when should I hold steam power? No, the way to hold them when no when to fold them, right? My answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I keep bringing it up every day, uh, every time we do these podcasts, and I just, I'm, I hold. I'm just holding because now, like I, like I said in the first episode, and I think the third episode, there's just that boom from Steemit that Bitcoin went through and all the other previous altcoins have gone through, it's yet to happen with Steemit. It's kind of sort of happened, but the most recent example is Ethereum. And I think Monero is kind of going through it right now, but Steemit's right on that. It is right there. It's about to do it. And there's a lot of money to be made by just believing in the system, which is a really weird concept that the more you put into this, that that money will grow in the future just because the system you're using it on is growing. That's a, you know, that's where the investment, uh, the stock investment kind of mentality comes in, but it's still more than that. Do you believe in life after Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe? <sighs> so... Yeah, so I, I, I've seen that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, for example, in my case, um, I've been powering up all my, my Steam dollars, basically. I've been powering yeah. it all up. You know? But in your case, Gabriel, you have a little bit of a different strategy, don't you? I do. I mean, if somebody didn't really have a strategy and they just want a general advice, I would say, I mean, Steam Power is great because it protects you against inflation. It pays you interest. It's very nice that way. And you also have the option, like once you've powered up a certain amount and, you know, if you want kind of a steady paycheck thing going on, then you can power down and have that little, you know, weekly paycheck thing going on, which is kind of cool. But in my case, I've got a couple of projects on the go. And I mean, my philosophy personally has always been never to just invest in things and hoard value. Like, I've never been into like buying precious metals just to keep it under a mattress. I've never been into just buying stocks on the prospect that it's going to be worth more someday because I feel like every dollar I'm not using, I'm not putting to work actively is a dollar that I'm wasting. Essentially. I want to be putting to things. I, I want my value to go to work and make more value actively where I can actually participate in it and, and put my own energy into it. So I tend to look for startups, business projects, that kind of thing, where I can put the money to work, you know? So with Steemit, it's, it's the same thing. There's all these opportunities right now to add value. There's this basic platform that we've got. We've got the blockchain. It's a great concept, but there's so much room for improvement. There's, there's so much demand in the marketplace now for add-ons, extra features, extra everything, really. I mean, all the social media platforms out there, they all have features that Steam it lacks. There's great opportunities for software developers to add more features, create new platforms based on the Steemit blockchain and all that stuff. I'm not a programmer though, so I don't really have that ability to run out and create a new uh, clone of Steemit or something like that. But I'm good at recruiting people, finding value and talent and bringing people together and organizing projects. So I've been building this uh, support center lately. I mean, on Steemit, I've kind of developed a, kind of a reputation as being helpful, you know, for newcomers who don't understand things and stuff. So that, how can I kind of apply that to a larger scale and, you know, bring more people in and do this professionally? So that's kind of one of the things that I'm doing. And then on, on the other side, I'm making a film studio too. So I am powering down my Steam right now. So that money that's coming out of that is going into these other projects. So it's investment capital essentially, yeah. which I think is something that steam was meant to do. I think it was meant to serve as sort of a crowdfunding investment capital creation platform. So hopefully I can help kind of prove that concept and show people how to use it that way. Yeah. Especially if you're if your film studio, your media company or whatever is, going to actually further put into Steam and kind of like uh, be premiered on Steam, uh, that's, 
that would further just give validity to a Steam only platform and a just a tiered system within the Steam it, uh, platform for. Yeah, like, I mean, we had this guest on the other day who was making, like, the Twitter for Steam, right? Or someone's going to make a video hosting platform soon. It's not going to be me. I'm, I'm not a programmer. But somebody's right. going to do it, and they're going to need content. So I can make content. So that's what I'm going to do, right? Mm. So let's say I'm, I'm a noob. I, uh, I just signed up. I've got, uh, you know, $4.50 in my uh, Steam wallet. And I posted my introduction post and I got lucky. Uh, the, the right people saw it and I, I did a good job on it. Multimedia, the whole thing. I earned 800 bucks. Yeah. Okay. okay so let, let's, you know, let, let's keep think about that person and let's give them some advice, you know? So first of all, they got 400 of it in, in steam power. And they got 400 of it in, in Steam dollars. Steam power, it's hard, hard to withdraw. Steam dollars, super easy to withdraw. You know, may, maybe this person, they need a little money. You know, uh, you know maybe they want to buy some tools, a uh, better camera. Maybe they need to pay rent. You know, so what, what kind of advice, you know, would you give to, to a, new, uh, a new guy in that situation? Just so do that. <laughs> exactly well, what you said george exactly what you said whatever you got to do pay rent buy some tools whatever just do it and experience that savor that this thing that i just did on this this online platform just paid for this thing that i right. wanted savor that and realize what that means because right. next time you're not going to do the, the same thing Next time you make money on Steemit with your next post, you're going to think twice. You're going to know that it's real because you've already spent it. You've already bought yourself something shiny. Now you're going to think, okay, this is, this is big. This has real potential. What am I going to do with this in a smart way, right? If you're like me, you'll probably just start to power up. <laughs> you're smart like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly do believe that is the smart answer. Um, but I do want to offer an alternative option for people who still at this point are not sold or don't have that faith. They're, that, they're not even those like pragmatic adopters. They're the late adopters that just stumbled upon this thing, which I don't even think there's any way that those people have eyes on Steam it yet. But let's just say... Um, there's those platforms or those exchanges that we were talking about, I think, last episode or the episode before that, where um, you can convert your Steam Power, um, you can actually send it and deposit it to a Steam Power address on the exchange, and you can actually directly trade your Steam Power uh, for Bitcoin, and I believe also for Steam Dollars, if I remember correctly, you can do both on there. They've got both um, options. Or is it not Steam Power? Is it, I want to say it's the Steam Power, or is it just Steam? I'd be very surprised if you could trade Steam Power on an exchange. One second, let me triple check that. I, I feel like I might just be giving misinformation, and I don't want to do that. This is the first that I've heard of that, and just be forewarned that that probably will that probably will be possible someday, if it's not now. But if you do that, you will be mocked. Well, I saw um, it was some somebody big, some exchange or somebody was advertising uh, high steam power accounts. Yes, I have from seen that. early on, you yeah. know. And yeah. so, like, they can't, you can't move the Steam Power, but you can sell the login for the account, for the account. Exactly. Right. And I think that's, uh, I, I think that's kind of just the quickest way that you'll be able to cash out your own Steam Power is... It's basically uh, a note, it. right? It's like those, those uh, people that sell notes, you know, where it's... You can't really do much with it right now, but it's it's good for you know rent payments or uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for on Notes. on sh shares. You know, um, I think it's a a way of cashing out of the platform. I think that it, that it basically is, yeah. Yeah, but that, that that's that's pretty much an edge case. I think that there's yeah. not going to be right. it's not going to be a big market in this case. This guy had nineteen 
uh, accounts, if I remember correctly, that he was trying ah. to sell. Oh, dude, he's got a freaking system. Yeah, but I think you know. I think it it uh, it boils down to whether you know whether you're, whether you're going to hold steam power or not. I think it boils down to your long your appraisal of the long term viability of the platform, and it's it can be hard to make a decision because um, steam is a cl- complex system. I spent like a couple weeks working nonstop just to get like the basic parts, uh, a solid understanding of the basic parts. And actually, I wrote a uh, seven thousand word uh, introduction, and I've um, I'm in the final stages of editing a uh, like a screencast tutorial explaining the whole thing that I'm going to be releasing this week. Um, nice, which, sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be really good for uh, people who are completely new that they can get up to speed in you know probably under an hour, forty five minutes or so, and just understand everything you know. Uh, everything uh, when it comes to uh, the content creation and curation and what to do with your money side, you know, and, and what are the different tricks, you know, like the different things like, uh, like the, the, how your voting power uh, declines and how curation isn't, isn't really worth it that much. But um, I think it comes down to the long-term viability of the platform. You know, you have a guy like Tone Vase saying, Oh, uh, well, Daniel Larimer's a scammer and, uh, you know, uh, this is going to implode any moment, you know, just spreading fear and not capable of giving a good reason why, you know, not capable of pointing to documents and actually using a lot of ad hominem, ad hominem, you know, just insulting people. And then you have some competing platforms coming up, like I think it was yours network or something and most <laughs> You know, there there are a few competing platforms that are coming up. Too. I'm not sure Monero's situation. I just know that it's a rising crypto. I've been keeping my eye on for a while, so I, I'm not sure what the plan is there. But I, Steemit has actually changed my view on crypto investment um, for the better, in my opinion. I now share Gabriel's um, philosophy, and you know, I it, it's. Realistically, it's more of what a investor period should have a philosophy as. I was just being a stupid kid who wanted to make money and found out investing was the way to do it, but didn't know how to do it. And I'm learning that there's a lot of really good information here on the Steemit platform. I've been getting a load of good information in the uh, Steam speak. Mm-hmm. For people who want to check that out, there are very, very, very intelligent people on this platform and in the Steam speak who are just wealths of knowledge and they just want to be asked questions so they can give you the answer to make your life better um mm-hmm. very selflessly it's a but they know that you'll return the favor over a long enough timeline they just know the way that works um so but there's, I, I, but there's some competition coming up now yours.network akasha which is founded by uh an ethereum co-founder scenario scenario Ooh. that's old that Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to fear monger or anything, but I think, you know, for a noob coming in, like, you know, like, well, do I, do I put it into steam power? And I don't, I, maybe I don't see it again completely for a couple of years, or do I spread myself out to these other platforms? You right. know, I think it would be smart for just people to pay attention to the other platforms as well, recognize what Steam's doing right, recognize what those other platforms are doing differently, and then recognize the potential niches and the way those systems are going to be able to interact with each other for different blockchains. Um, Because I think that's going to be an inevitability. People are, somebody somewhere is going to want to change up the way their blockchain works just a little bit differently and the people from different communities are still going to want to interact with each other so that that currency exchange is still going to occur um and but i think that's going to be up for the people who are there's going to be different philosophies driving each cryptocurrency platform um and we're going to find out how those different platforms that are popping up are going to capitalize on their niche because these niches are still huge with millions of potential people per crypto so. Yeah, I think I think we'll have to do an episode on these competitors. There's a a, a fellow Steemit user, Jay Holdsworthy, who did uh, an analysis of Steam versus Yours Network. Uh, Gabriel, do you have any uh, insights on, on these competitors? 
Not really, no. The only ones that I've looked into were using a tipping-based system. They weren't creating their own cryptocurrency. So mm -hmm. if there yeah. are others, yeah. Your if there are, network uses Bitcoin, for example. Yeah, okay, right. If there are others that come along that use their own cryptocurrency like Steam does, then I would definitely check into that. As long as you're just uh, giving people tips with other cryptos, though, I don't see that as being any kind of a viable competitor. Because you're, you'd have to be, you'd be spending your own money. Right, yes. And then there's, there's the whole microtransaction issue. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because microtransactions, you know, some have made the argument that they're really not that practical on Bitcoin due right. to um, uh, transaction fees, you know, which yep. is, I, th I think, is a, is a solid argument. Well, what do you think, Stephen? Um, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. I uh, I I got I started reading stuff on Steam. It's something caught my eye. And sorry, I, I put you on the spot there. Sorry. No, no, you're good. I just remind me. I I know that the auditory was being. Ah, uh, we're talking about the different competitors to Steam. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The uh, so. I think that the different competitors, like, I mean, I kind of said it earlier, but um, the different competitors, like, I think it's just going to capitalize on those niches. All of them are based off of the spread of information. That's what I've been able to notice. They're all all about that sen uh, sensorless platform, um, which is the driving force behind just the crypto technology in general, that lack of um, oversight in that capacity or authority. But... I, again, I, I want to just go back to what I had said earlier and that people are just going to find their niches and stick with them on their own platforms and then those niches are going to interact with each other because when some people just don't want to hear a message of what some people are saying, they're going to avoid that platform that's delivering that message and Steam, it seems to have at this point kind of been capitalizing on, I brought it up before, that intellectual an anarchist and investor group. So just, just typical thinkers. But when we get into the, I brought it up before, that the little kittens and all that stuff coming to the Steam It boards, you know, I don't recognize whales as finding that valuable. <laughs> <laughs> so those guys are just going to have a hell of a time making money. But then, you know, somebody somewhere who's a whale who loves their kittens. Yeah. loves those puppies they're going to upvote that content and that's just going to find its way on a different platform uh minds.com is something that i kind of use for a free views uh for so i pull people over from that website and they capitalize it on with views and stuff like that but they're more about this uh hippie love community is really what i'm noticing more than the uh practical anarchist or practical philosophy, practical money uh, that Steam it offers at the moment. So these are these different, that's just an example of the different philosophies driving these communities um, where they're going to stay separate. Well, that, that's an interesting topic to raise, I think, because that's something that Steam it has going for it, which is the, because uh, Daniel Larimer knits Cotter voluntarists, um, they've attracted a lot of voluntarists and other, you know, libertarian anarchists to the platform. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people would say, well, you know, you know, libertarian anarchists, we're smart people. And, uh, you know, we see things other people don't. And, you know, we would smell out a scam a million miles away, but it's not true. It's not true. We're very, we're, we're, we are surprisingly, I don't count myself in this, but we are surprisingly generally very tribal people. Very tribal. Oh, you just you, you latch on to an ideal you have. You find people who share the same ideal, and then you relate to those people. And then the people that challenge those ideals become your enemy. Uh, yes. it, it's a little weird when it comes to the peaceful anarchism philosophy because now you've got a philosophy that refuses to recognize enemies, and that's the that's the threat to a lot of philosophies. Is but you have to have an enemy. How yeah. what can there be conflict? And you know that's some some people just aren't ready for that one. Yeah.